what is the Electoral College? How does it work? And most importantly, should we maintain it? These are the questions we're going to be answering today on this video by the Youth Political Activism Club on the Electoral College system that we use in the United States, as well as some pros, cons, and overall background. So, just to start off with the background, citizens in the United States do not vote for president directly. Electors vote for the president through the Electoral College, and we'll talk more about this process of electors in uh, the next following slides. And just if I could just turn on this. Okay, great. There are 538 electors in total divided out by state, and the way they calculate this number is by the number of senators plus the number of representatives. So, every state um, has to have at least three electors minimum. Those come from the two senators from every state state and the one representative again minimum so even states with very very low populations have to have at least three electors and then the 538 number comes from the 100 senators 435 representatives and then three uh, other electors from the um from washington dc the winner of the popular vote in each state gets all the electors in that in that state except for Nebraska and Maine, which practice a different thing where they divide up the electoral votes pa based on who won the popular vote in each congressional district. And they both have three congressional districts, I believe, or two. Uh, it's three or two. And then this is just a map of how the electoral uh, votes are divided up um, by state for 2024. This map does not actually have Nebraska nor Maine divided up by congressional states uh sorry about that but everything else is right based on what's going to be on the 2024 uh, map uh who are electors and how are they chosen so this is a very interesting process it does vary by state as most things do but in general state parties choose party officials state lawmakers and party activists through committees and different uh commissions they have so the way they get together is just that the state party officials uh, sit down together at a convention, a meeting, um, a commission of some sort, and they go through a list of people that they want to have on uh, their presidents or for their uh, presidential candidates list of electors. So each presidential candidate gets their own electors, and uh, just again, anyone can really be in it, but I'll talk about the requirement. Uh, in a sec, so they cannot currently be in Congress. The only requirements are, again, they can't be a current representative in Congress. They have to be over the age of 25, 18, sorry. And, of course, they have to be a citizen of the United States. Are electors bound by the popular vote? So, again, this varies by state, but 32 states in D.C. require by law for electors to follow the popular vote. Uh, you will go, you will face some sort of... Um, you know, uh, jail time if you don't follow the popular vote. And other states have fines for going faithless, as they call it when you disobey the state popular vote, while others throw out your vote uh, if you go faithless. And then 99% of electors follow the state popular vote of their representative state. So it does happen where electors uh, don't follow the state popular vote, but it's not uh, likely and it's not common. In 2020, or not, sorry, 2016, there were only 18 electors who went rogue, I believe. And then I'm not sure what the stats are on 2020, but I do know 2016. And then in 2016, again, just as an example, Bill Clinton was an elector for the state of New York. So, again, these can really be anyone. They don't have to be a current uh, employee of our government at all. You know, Bill Clinton hasn't worked uh, for the government since he retired, since he finished his second term. So, you know, they can be anyone. They can even be uh, everyday civilians, such as you and I. The only thing that state parties really look for is that person really uh, be committed to that party and that candidate and make sure that they don't go faithless. So, pros of the Electoral College. What do supporters of the Electoral College argue? And this is, uh, you know, generalization, some of the main points, but not all of them, obviously. So, uh, it prevents a demagogue from getting in power. So, a demagogue is just a leader who relies on people's emotions and prejudices to get into power as opposed to usually using rational argument. Um this is kind of following the idea that the Founding Fathers fear that an uneducated population would fall prey to uh, demagogues, um, authoritarians, populists, these type of people who don't really have real ideas, just use emotions to get into power. 
um, at this time, the United States population was much less educated than we are now. Literacy rates were much lower. And so overall, the population... Oh, and also something to mention is just the way that we received information. Right now, in this age of the internet and of mass media, we get information very quickly. We can just Google anything we want on the internet and get it in within seconds. Versus back then, you would have to, you know, not only read books, but books were expensive. Only the uh, upper classes had them. There were Public libraries were a thing, but they weren't as accessible. So again, the access to information was also uh, farther away, never mind the learning barrier barriers and the literacy barriers um and so that's something that the founding fathers also had to keep in mind for that uh time period but again a, a rebuttal to this would be that now we have um, more access to information so that anyone no matter what social or uh, racial or whatever class they're from they can get access to information on candidates and about our government and then another rebuttal to that rebuttal is that now there's also more propaganda and fake news uh, and conspiracies out there that um, again no matter how much information you do have you can still be uh, or fall prejudice to those types of things, which again go back on the whole educated topic, and then it makes for a national campaign. Uh, this is fairly you know straightforward. It gives more voting power to smaller states, which makes uh, candidates have to go to a wider variety of states rather than just the states with higher populations or just swing states. Uh, this isn't necessary in every state exactly. Um, Democrats and or most of all candidates aren't going to go to California, or Wyoming, or one of those states like that. But for the most part, they do, do go to most states. Uh, and then cons of the Electoral College. Why do people want to get rid of it? Well, the Electoral College does not correspond to the will of the people. It's undemocratic. Uh, so in two elections of the 21st century, the candidate who lost the popular vote became president. You're probably aware of this with Trump in 2016, but also happened in, with Bush in 2000. Uh, and before that, once, I mean, not once before, many times before, but... Uh, that was before <laughs> this time period that we're, most of us are aware of, uh, enforces a two-party system which deprives people of choice since they're fo forced to choose the lesser of two evils. So an example for this again is in 1992, Ross Perot, the third party candidate, won 19% of the popular vote, but zero electoral votes. And so the electoral college system, again, does not correspond to these 19% of the voters, which are millions of people in this year. Uh, one, you know, voted for this one candidate, and yet he won zero electoral votes, and thus had zero percent chance of uh, winning the presidency. And even if there was a popular vote, he still wouldn't win, necessarily. Well, no, he wouldn't win with these numbers. But it doesn't, it, it reduces the chance. You voting for a third-party candidate in general isn't going to do anything in this electoral system we have because of, you know, our two major parties that uh, majority of Americans, you know, either support one or dislike the other enough to vote for the opposing one. And then because of the way electors are distributed, it leads to smaller states getting more electors. So I'm going to be uh, providing an example for that shortly. But, oh, and uh, votes in these states literally correspond to more than votes in bigger states. And then again, there's going to be an example for that. So in 2016, just to quantify these numbers for you all, uh, Donald Trump received 306 electoral votes, Hillary Clinton 232, and actually I think Donald Trump went down to 304 because of uh, um, faithless voters, I think both of them did, but still, Donald Trump became president, obviously, but he only won uh, less than 63 million votes versus Hillary won 65.8. So she won about 3 million more than Trump did, but yet yeah, Trump became president. So again, it, it really depends. If this was any other country um, on earth, Hillary Clinton would have become the 45th president of the United States, but Donald Trump became the president since he won the electoral votes based on the system that we have specifically in America. So, and this is part of the reason why this whole electoral college system really ramped up in popularity and discussion and uh, also, um, you know, uh, conflicted opinions because of the 2016 election. 
oh sorry, uh, and then twenty in tw two thousand sorry, uh, Bush won fifty point four million of votes, and Gore won fifty point nine. So Al Gore won five hundred thousand more votes than uh, George W. Bush did, and yet Bush became president again because of the electoral system, as you can see, um, actually doesn't say the total, but. You can tell with a lot of these states that uh, Bush won, there was no way that Gore was going to win with most of these going to uh, Bush. But anyways, but Gore did win more votes. So again, another instance where if this was another country, Gore would have become our president, our 43rd president, but Bush became it because of this electoral college system we have. So uh, this example that I was talking about earlier of the uneven distribution, we have California up top here and obviously here, and then we have Wyoming here. And this just happened. I didn't even put the <laughs> the blue and the red on purpose, but it just so happened to be that way. Um, so California has 54 electoral college votes or 55. I think 54 in 2024, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, but still if it's 55, it doesn't change much. And then 39 million people as of, tw as of when I'm filming this, 2023. Uh, so one electoral vote corresponds to over 700,000 people in California versus, uh, and this is just, you know, simple division, uh, versus in Wyoming, they have three electoral college votes in total and less than 600,000 people, uh, which again, one of the smallest states in the union uh, by population, I think maybe the smallest. And then their one electoral vote corresponds to less than 200,000 people. So obviously you see that this one electoral vote represents a way larger amount of Californians than one electoral vote does Wyomingans. <laughs> I'm not sure how, uh, what they're called. Um, but you know, these discrepancies alone, that's part of the reason why it's undemocratic, unfair, uh, etc. So, uh, just some discussion things to keep in mind. Ask yourself, ask other people about this discussion, but why should the way we vote for um, president differ from every the way we vote for every other public office in the U.S.? Again, the way that we vote for other uh, offices is by a majority vote through actual uh, direct democracy. Um, and just part of the reason, well, part of the background of the Electoral College is that it's a uh, middle ground between direct democracy and a republic. It's somewhere in between. And also, uh, the Founding Fathers, again, on the uneducated population topic, they wanted to give the vo the people a voice, but not too much so that if they're uneducated, that uh, the country doesn't have a uh, coherent leader. Um, so just... You know, keep these questions in mind. Oh, and also the way we vote for, say, um, in the primaries for, you know, Republican candidates for president or Democratic candidates for president is the way plurality vote. So that, again, is so different. Uh, should states with po smaller populations get more power? Again, the Wyoming, California thing, just, you know, something to keep in mind. I'm not expressing an opinion on these just for your own sake does the electoral course sorry does the electoral college rep misrepresent the will of majority of voters uh i think that this is kind of obvious but you know uh without the electoral college would flyover states be neglected again in the ways that i'm getting to this question is would that national campaign which is one of the pros of the electoral college would that not be a, a thing anymore because um for the most part, uh, candidates would be able to go to mostly big cities and forget the all of middle America and the flyover states. Uh, you know, they could just hit San Francisco, L.A., Orange County, New York, Seattle, Chicago, Miami, Detroit, uh, you know, Houston, Dallas, Austin, uh, San Antonio, um, you know, and that's still a lot of cities, but don't get me wrong, but, you know, Boston, all those east coast cities and the, the you know where the populations are higher and then forget everyone in middle america should the electoral college be abolished so uh straight and simple do you think it should be a thing for longer or do you think that it should be gone and if why or why not explain your con explain your point of view down in the comments below uh start a discussion let's get this going and lastly, thank you for watching.
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this type of content. It's different from what we normally make, but I wanted to make a video actually educating about the Electoral College, how it works. I think it's a very interesting system that we have here in the United States, whether you think it's good or bad. It's still interesting nonetheless, since it's different from any other country. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you.